What's going on guys, Dylan DeJesus here. Welcome back for another video. And today we are going to be giving you guys our wood grain airbrush tutorial. Now this is a really cool texture and one that I actually haven't done in quite a few years. So the most recent pair that I did trying to emulate a wood grain is gonna be the Chicago Bulls Jordan 5. And this is just what I would consider a much less detailed, kind of quicker rendition of doing a lot of the same principles that we'll be talking about in today's tutorial, but we're gonna be going into way more detail on how you can create an even more realistic look. So before I was ready to begin, I had to have a little chat with my buddy Wally Champ on doing some unique airbrush textures just like this because he has done some incredible pairs over the years, like these Boston Celtic sixes where he's trying to emulate that parquet floor from inside the garden. So he totally knocked those out of the park and I definitely wanted to chat with him, get inside his mind on how he does some of this. Now to begin actually painting this pair of Jordan 1s, I began by making sure that they were completely prepped and by taping off all of the surfaces where I didn't want to get any of our wood grain paneling. Then for my base color, I took an even mixture of boiler brown, tan, and brown, mixed those together, and then threw in a little bit of white to lighten it up just a little bit more. Now that we have our base brown completely laid down, we're just about ready to move into our paneling, but this is where you really need to start to take a look at wood paneling itself, and how are we going to try to recreate that design? So for me, when I tried to look at some of the better pairs that I thought really accomplished a wood grain texture, at first it could be a little bit overwhelming just looking at the end result and wondering how am I going to get there? I don't even know what to do once I just have this base brown laid down. And so from time to time, something that I like to do is try to reverse engineer how something looks. So what I decided to do was head over to Photoshop, open up a blank document and just paint a brown square and then just try to visualize how do I go from here to there? What are the steps that I need to take to really achieve this paneling effect? The first thing that I know for sure I'm gonna begin with is a bunch of horizontal stripes. The size of these stripes is essentially gonna be based off the scale of the actual pattern you're trying to recreate. Now, when I look at all of these horizontal stripes, I know that eventually these will become either pieces of tape or strips of vinyl that I'm gonna be cutting to the perfect size. And so I just started to play with different things like what's going to happen if I were to airbrush the top of every single stripe and then peel back that tape? Or what's going to happen if I'm going to airbrush the top and bottom of every single stripe and peel back both of those pieces of tape and just see sort of what I start to think is gonna look a little bit better and gonna be a little bit more achievable when trying to translate this onto a pair of shoes. Then I began playing with some different placements for the vertical stripes portion of the wood paneling. The conclusion that I came to for what I thought actually looked the best was going to be to do just a slight airbrush, a little bit of a vignette almost, directly on top of every single stripe for the horizontal portion. Then when I move on to airbrushing the vertical portion is where I have even more control of trying to really create that randomness within the entire pattern of having some panels much darker where I'm gonna be spraying much more of the panel from both of the vertical portions. And then I'm gonna have some panels where I'm hardly spraying near the vertical portion. And that's gonna create a much lighter panel. And you really just wanna have a nice flow to your pattern, have a nice mix up of some panels much darker, some panels much lighter. This is really gonna help achieve that realistic look of having that variance, having that contrast within your panels. Once I knew how to properly start working towards the end design by doing it here in Photoshop, then I knew it was just gonna be about executing it on a pair of shoes. Hopefully that breakdown made a fair amount of sense to you and I know it's something that really helped me just sort of start to really understand the end result that I'm trying to work towards. Now in order to come up with the perfect size or perfect width stripe, what I did was take a quick measurement from the midsole to the top of this panel and divide that up by the number of horizontal stripes that I wanted to use. I decided that that number was going to be 12. So what I ended up with was a 3 8 of an inch wide stripe. I didn't have any 3 8 inch tape, so I decided to cut a bunch of pieces of vinyl in that exact width. For my first stripe, I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down and try to line that up exactly on my midsole line where my tape is. I'm gonna then place another stripe directly on top of that first one, and then we're gonna be using some of our 3 inch wide Pro Tapes crepe paper to mask off directly above that stripe. After a little bit of heat setting, we are ready to remove that first stripe that we laid down. Now for the actual paint color, you're gonna to wanna to just create a darker shade of your original brown by just mixing a little bit of black in. I didn't go with a pure black because that would be a little bit too strong here. You're just trying to go for a darker brown. Now I'm gonna aim that paint color directly at my midsole, only trying to hit the bottom portion of this stripe. Since we have this entire stripe masked off, 
This is also the time where we want to do the vertical portion within this stripe. And this is the mistake that I made in the past on my previous bulls pair. I went ahead and did all of my horizontal stripes first, just did all of the airbrushing on the bottom portion of the stripe. And then I went in and just tried to freehand the vertical portion of the stripe. And you can see that it extended onto the different various horizontal stripes. And that just created a little bit more of a less polished and less realistic type look in my opinion. And now since everything above this stripe is masked off, I don't have to worry about any of this spray ending up on any of the other horizontal stripes. This is also the time where you're gonna get to play with a couple different variations on which direction you actually want to do the shading. For example, if you were to have two portions facing each other very close together, that's going to create a really nice dark panel. And the first time I did this, I ended up just trying to use a thick business card. I thought that this was going to be the way to go, but I quickly changed that after this first stripe. Now that our first stripe is completely airbrushed, I'm going to go ahead and mask that off with another one of our stripes that we've created. Then another important thing that you wanna do in my opinion, on top of each stripe, is just make a marking of where you did the vertical portions for your airbrushing. The reason for this is you never wanna have two panels stacked on top of each other with almost that same vertical plane airbrushed. Think of brick, for example, how it's staggered. You don't wanna have two grout lines completely align on two bricks stacked on top of each other. You stagger them. So we wanna be doing that same thing here. And since we're masking off the stripe that we just did, I wanna take note of where I did the vertical portions. So we have our first stripe completely masked off. We're ready to move on to our second one, but we need to place a stripe directly on top of our second one just to make sure that we can keep everything completely aligned. So I'm gonna be taking my third stripe, placing that on top of my second one, masking off everything above the third stripe, and then I'm ready to remove that second stripe and begin our airbrushing there. Now it's going to be repeating the same process that we did with our first stripe. So I'm gonna be shading directly on top of that first stripe onto our second panel, just near the bottom portion. After my first go around, I realized that the business card didn't work that well for shading the vertical portions of each stripe. So what I did was just cut up some different lengths of the same size width stripe, and then I knew that I could place these directly in there, almost like they were individual panels, and then just hit these in some different directions with some different variations in my shading. So sometimes I'll actually treat each of these little pieces like an individual panel and I'll just hit the outsides of both with a little bit of shading. Sometimes I'll only hit one side in one different direction. Just play with a couple different things with these. Now we're gonna mask off our second stripe and again, just mark where we did our vertical shading. Now we can begin pulling off all of our additional masking and we're ready to peel back our third stripe and paint inside of there. I also realized that my pencil markings weren't quite visible enough, so I'm gonna switch over to using pen. And then I also wanna take note of which direction I did my shading in. So I'm gonna include a line telling me which direction I previously just did all of my shading in, just so I can continue to create that randomness to the pattern. One thing that's super important and pretty hard to tell in the moment is to make sure that anytime you're doing this vertical shading, you really wanna try to make sure that you're using the same vertical plane each time because if you peel back all of these stencils, all of this masking when we're finally done, and all of your vertical portions aren't quite aligned, it's just not gonna have the right look that you're going for. So creating these little mini panels that I have here makes me know that if I align them in the same horizontal plane each time, they're gonna align perfectly for me. But when I was trying to use the business card at first, that's when there was a little bit too much wiggle room for me and I wasn't gonna have the same vertical line work every time. And it's really just a matter of lather, rinse, repeat from here along with a ton of patience and really making sure that you have quite a bit of variation within all of your panels. You wanna have quite a few different sizes. You wanna have a lot of different degrees to your shading and just the true randomness to it is really gonna give you the best look in my opinion.
Okay, so now we have finally made it to one of the most nerve-wracking moments I have had in quite a while of peeling back all of these stripes and revealing what we have underneath. Now, as always, a super critical thing anytime you're gonna be doing something like this where you're masking off or stenciling off a ton of areas is it's gonna be super, super, super important. I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that your surface is totally prepped and you give a ton of dry time for your base cones, that base brown that we did, you really wanna make sure that everything is prepped and everything is painted correctly because the last thing you want is to do all of this artwork, all of this airbrushing, all of this texture work, and then peel back the stencils, peel back the tape, and you have a ton of paint peeling underneath. That would be a total nightmare. And once all of this hard work finally began to reveal itself, it was so worth it to take the time and the patience to really try and do something like this properly. Take your time, a ton of patience is required, but it looks so clean without even going back in and adding in more details, weathering it up a bit more, which we're gonna do. But this base that we have here of just all of the paneling itself looks so clean. I'm so happy with this end result. And here's some pictures of how it looks before we go in and add in even more of that weathering to it. Now to move on to some of that weathering, a great little trick here that my buddy Wally Champ passed on to me is we're just gonna take some masking tape and begin ripping it in half. And what we're looking for here is that rough and rugged edge that you get when you rip the tape in half. We want some peaks and valleys within that edge and this is gonna help when we go in. We're gonna do some highlights and shading within each individual panel. And this rugged edge that we have is the perfect tool for the job. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white, mix that into my base brown, and then I'm just gonna go in inside of some of the panels that are already naturally a little bit lighter. And I'm just gonna use this unfinished edge of the rip tape and do some individual highlights within some of those panels. This is definitely a situation where less is more and continue to just add layers, but you don't want your highlight color to be too light and stand out and not really make a lot of sense. This is just something you're gonna do to add within each panel and just really rev up that randomness to the pattern. Then the last little trick that I have for you is we're gonna take some of those individual planks that we created earlier, and then we just wanna add a couple circles at the end of each side of the plank. This is almost like if you were doing rivets within a Warhawk theme, but what we're trying to go for here on a wood paneling theme is almost if you were nailing in nails into the wood panels near the edges of the panel. Now with the airbrush, I'm just gonna take our darker color that we've been using the whole time for our shading and just spray directly through those circles at the end. Now we have a dark brown edge around there. Then I'm gonna just go in with the toothpick and the lighter color that we used for the highlights and just add in some tiny little light dots inside of those dark dots. And again, this is just a cool effect that almost looks like nails within the wood paneling. Now for the rest of the shoe, this entire design was actually just inspired by a client who wanted a pair because they love going to breweries. I thought it would be really cool to do some of the panels trying to emulate a wood barrel. So that's how I came up with the idea to even do this wood texture in the first place. But for the rest of the shoe, I just created this really cool shade of blue. I went ahead and did some of our airbrush stencils on top. I had all of our wood paneling taped off and I was of course, again, scared to peel back all of that paint. But here's a look at the end result for how these turned out now. So as you guys can tell from the end result here, if you really take the time and you put in a ton of patience to do a theme like this, you can really achieve a really cool realistic wood grain texture. I'm beyond pleased with this end result. This is definitely one of my favorite pairs I've done just based off the wood paneling alone. I think that this is one of the harder tutorials that we've tried to put out on YouTube. I think this is one of the harder sort of designs and things to really emulate because I know it requires a lot of patience to do something like this. So if anybody's willing to take on this task, I would love to see what you guys are able to come up with for trying to emulate a wood grain texture. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this sort of longer version of a tutorial. I tried to teach this as best as possible because when I first started to even look at it, it was something that I really couldn't even envision in my own head sort of how to even do this. I saw the end result. I saw what the beginning would look like trying to pick the perfect shade of brown, but I didn't know the journey that it would take to get there. So hopefully I was able to break that down for you guys. Go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already. Make sure you guys are subscribed and we'll see you guys in that next video. Thank you.